Now let's start. So welcome, uh, Lazar. It's a pleasure to to have you. We in the old days we would meet on on shows and we would we would have eventually a, a beer or a coffee together. Nowadays we we have Zoom meetings, so this is uh, what's happening and and webinars. So it's still a great pleasure to have you and to talk today about uh, you know how to drive external traffic to to Amazon to grow your business, right? So as you probably know, uh, how we we uh, our webinars always start with a fun fact, right? And the fun fact of our of our guests. And so Lazar, what's your the fun fact about yourself to get people to know you a bit? Oh my God! Like I'm a huge PPC nerd. That's not really a fun fact. I'm a huge fan of of everything numbers related, and I, I'm a huge fan of dogs. I have a Labrador that is like one of one of the craziest dogs ever. So yeah. Okay, we'll go with the dog. It's not the the funniest fact, but that's good. That's good. We're getting warm, so that's cool. No, 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 no worry. So, Lazar, let, tell us a bit about yourself and your background, who you are, and who is what is uh, Sellers Alley. Yeah, definitely. So, I'm in PPC for around ten years now. Um, I've been working for some huge companies in the past. I worked for um, one of the biggest e-commerces in Europe, one Danish company. Uh, after that, I was sales manager for uh, one coffee-related company from UK, eight-figure seller on Amazon. Uh, and eventually, I created Sellers Alley, our agency uh, that is focused. We well, we started uh, with full focus on Amazon PPC, and as we started to grow, a lot of stuff happened. We became uh, Trasio partners. And we do a lot of stuff for them. We sign some papers with TikTok. So we're now official partners with TikTok. And we provide a lot of like really good stuff regarding TikTok with a lot of insights and so on. Uh, so when we started like it, it was like modest start. And, and you know me from that period, like when, when we were just starting. And now Sellers Alley is a team of 75 team members. Like, so it's pretty crazy. We just recently came to a new office. This is our fifth office. So that's one of the fun fun facts about me. So the, a, the man, the man with five offices. So uh, okay, the, the, no, we, we we're we're moving from one to another, and like it, it's absolutely. Let, me, let crazy. me dream. Let me dream. Uh, yeah. So you. you've big growth, so which shows how successful the man is. So let's dive into, into our topic today, which is how to drive uh, traffic from outside of Amazon to grow your business on Amazon. So maybe the first intro question would be, how would you define the difference uh, between advertising on and off Amazon? Well, how, how would you define those differences and uh, why would you use one or the other? Yeah, uh, basically, there is a huge difference between advertising on Amazon and other platforms, especially if you're an e-commerce seller. And let's say that you're fully focused on Amazon. And like when you're on Amazon, everybody that comes to Amazon is oriented to buying stuff. Like they have like purchase intention. And when you want to advertise on Facebook, let's say, or Google or some, or let's say TikTok on the other hand, not everybody has a buying intention. So it's a, a different part of the funnel basically so when you when you start with amazon let's say that you're an amazon seller and that's what you started with and you want to expand further there is a question when do you want to start uh, with bringing traffic traffic from outside platforms and like is that the thing that should work for you and like is that something that um can be valuable for you so like a couple of years ago in 2017 amazon uh, started with something new, completely new, that never happened on Amazon before. It's called Amazon Attribution. And Amazon Attribution at that point was like in some alpha versions and nobody had it. And like a year after in 2018, like with every other Amazon pro program, it's like that, like with DSP and so on. So uh, they, they introduced Attribution. That's the first time when you're able to see what's going on with the traffic that is coming from external sources. Um, before of that, and like for a lot of European countries uh, where you, you have Amazon, you have storefronts and you have option to um, create custom URLs, uh, basically UTMs that you place at the end of URL. For those that don't, they, that don't know, uh, UTMs are uh, parts of URL 
that you create on your own and you uh, copy paste them to the end of the link to specific page. So for example, you have product listing page um, that is like amazon.com slash something, something like uh, ASIN and so on. And after that, there is a question mark, UTM, and then you can write whatever you wish. There are a couple of um, ways how to do it. And like, you can really deep dive when it comes to uh, creating UTMs. Um, just like to, to let you know, I, I, I'm huge, like I, I love PPC and I can talk for ages about it. So just let me know when I get off the track. Yeah, no, like... I'll, I'll, and I wanted to, and f my first stop already is, and what my first <laughs> question is, uh, is uh, like, what would be your recommendation? Which, what works best? Because you said, okay, we can decide. So the attribution, if I understand well, you can, you put a link and mm -hmm. you put just a UTM link. So you probably can follow wherever you're sending traffic to. What exactly. would be your recommendation? What works best? Or what would be your tips on where to send the traffic? Like, would it be on a, on a group page, on a, a brand store page, on the detail page? On what would, like, what would you recommend and why? It depends on the campaign that you're creating. It depends on keywords that you're using, targeting methods and so on. If you're using some remarketing and other stuff like from remarketing from, from your website and you want to send people to Amazon or so on. Like what we find that, that works pretty well is sending to product listings. If, if, you're, if your storefront is really good, you can send people there as well. Like if you're creative and like you did a lot of good stuff, like one of the things that people usually don't do, but it's like working as a charm, uh, like buyers want to see other people happy and they want to see videos of reviews, it's like video reviews. Like you can create one page on your storefront that is, that is dedicated to your like previous customers. Like, to, to share their experiences because you're able to uh, to upload videos, create one page with like 15 videos. That's, that would be fun. And people would love to see that. And that helps when it comes to conversion rate. And it's and pretty straightforward so, to make it. And a question on that. Would, would So are you able uh, on the system to take like uh, video reviews from your video pages and embed them into the uh, brand, one of the brand store pages? Is that what you're saying? You can upload them. Okay, so you would have to download and upload them. Yeah, and I know Amazon is very sensitive on when you're like quoting or giving uh, or saying, okay, I got five stars there here. They tend to block that. They don't block when you upload uh, videos from reviews, which are mm. coming from Amazon. It's working. Yeah, it's working. Like it, it, uh, videos or pictures of, of happy customers, that's working because it, it's something that, that you didn't make up. And like, uh, when it comes to terms of service, like none of those videos should have um, websites. Like to, Amazon doesn't like when you when you take their customer from I'd Amazon and, and, and send them away. But on the other hand, they're really happy when you send customers to Amazon. So uh, that's one of the things. And like one of the things that is uh, interesting about, about attribution, like everybody's is going to be like, oh, uh, attribution is not working. You know what? Why is not? working because you're used to like last click conversion on Amazon and you're you're used to like that click resulted in this sale and like you can connect them and when it comes to attribution there is 14 day window like there there is a time frame like it, when uh, the sales come and like especially like for people that I mentioned like when, when it comes to storefront which are which is not real attribution like creating utms on storefront uh that's that that way you don't have attribution and it's only last click so uh, those campaigns that come from google using utms from from storefronts if they don't result right away with sale and they're probably not going to result right away with sale you're going to end up with really bad return on ad spend so nobody wants to do that. And on the other hand, if you have attribution set correctly and, you, and you're and you fully aware of 14 um, day days window, yeah. that's a completely different thing. 
So, and that, that's, but that it reminds me a bit about ACOS versus TACOS, right? It's like sometimes if you want to look at return on an investment of the advertising itself, doesn't make a lot of sense. You have to look at the big picture. So maybe even the attribution is, is zero, but still you're growing your sales overall. Maybe you're still, uh, make, like, still successful, right? So it depends what uh, you are. And there's a general take us. And by the way, that's a question is like, uh, so uh, for everyone, maybe everyone knows already, you've got ACOS, which is when you're looking sales versus uh, what's a generated sales, oh, sorry, advertising versus what the ads have generated in terms of sales. TACOS is when you're looking the ads versus total sales. Does it make sense to have a like a TACOS including all advertising uh, outside and uh, inside Amazon? Is it something you're using yourself? Well, it, it really depends for like for us as an agency, I'm, I'm a data nerd and I love to see all of the numbers, you know, uh, for plants, it, we definitely offer that as an option. Like what do we usually do when we do like screening of, of the account? First thing that we want to check is to see proportion of uh, advertising sales versus organics. Like uh, it should be around like for healthy brand, it should be around 35% of all sales coming from PPC. If that number is way lower, it means that the brand is fully established and people know about the brand and they are buying products organically. And that product is uh, fully visible organically. On the other hand, if that number is way above 35%, let's say 80%, that brand is probably absolutely new and is fully relying on that advertising. So if you slow down the advertising, you're gonna like, crash all of the sales. When it comes to attribution on the side, like when it comes to attribution coming from whichever direction, from DSP, from Google ads, from TikTok, from Facebook and so on, uh, you cannot really see sales uh, on Amazon, in Amazon platform. In business reports, they're covered under overall sales. But like if you, if you track overall sales and you know your PPC sales and you see the proportion there. And if you see that the number is increasing or decreasing, you would be able to understand if you're doing some good stuff for your account or not. And it also really depends on like, what's the main goal of those campaigns there that you want to accomplish. And I think that's that's a, a, a super insight. So the, for me, it's incredible. So the first thing is you can send, you can create a page on your brand store with videos of happy customers and sending traffic to that will have a huge impact. Although we, you will not be able to track it very well with the attribution tool, but it still has the great, uh, it could have a great impact on how people are looking to your brand. So I think that's a first super branding exercise. There is one question that I'm pretty sure that somebody's going to ask is like how, how am i going to track uh, certain keywords uh, and their performance in some specific platform like true attribution so basically what you want to do there you need to have single keyword campaigns and that's the answer so you need to have a campaign with one keyword and to create separate url for each keyword and that's it that's the only way how how you can do it it doesn't necessarily mean that you should do it for all of the keywords, but for some protected keywords, for some, some group of keywords that you want to focus on, like for ranking and so on, you should definitely create um, single keyword campaigns, but not for all of them, because it's going to be such a headache to manage all of them on all platforms. One of the negative things when it comes to uh, sending traffic from the outside world to Amazon um, and that's the other question. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm just answering the questions that I'm asking here. <laughs> I'll, I'll have a drink. You go on, you go on. <laughs> so so uh, people usually think, uh, ask, like, can we create shopping campaigns uh, on Google for Amazon? And can we do uh, DPA campaigns on Facebook? And just to give you some valuable insight, like since we are partners with TikTok, we have some information from their end. And this is pretty exclusive thing. Um, TikTok is rolling out uh, DPA ads uh, pretty soon. We can expect them in the next week or, or so. So have that in mind. Uh, the answer for all of that is no, because Amazon is not providing feed for uh, being able to, to create shopping campaigns and to create DPA campaigns. Uh, for DPA what, campaigns is a DP 
D what can you explain for the audience dpa maybe mm -hmm. for those who don't know yeah definitely so when you go to uh to facebook for example and when you scroll and you see those those ads that can be scrolled like to the left like to be swiped to the left and you see like different products basically those campaigns are made in a manner that you have a feed with whichever amount of products you wish basically you can add up to 1 million products um, and by by the activity of the person like algorithm decides which product to show you know like let's say that you're let's say that you're amazon and you, they they by 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 your um tracking and like um engagement on their website they decide like which product to target you with so they don't yeah. they're not going to show you some some like stuff for dogs if you don't have a dog you know and that kind of stuff makes sense and you were saying about so you were saying that uh TikTok will have uh so advertising on their own platform uh soon or um uh, TikTok advertising is already available they have two options when it comes to advertising you have um first option for 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 the ads on uh, on TikTok is like when you open um the application first video that you have there you cannot scroll it for the first five seconds it's a paid ad and that one is really expensive in the us it's going to cost you around 300k a day and you're going to get nice. all of the impressions and the other one is like when you scroll like every fifth video should be an ad depending on the amount of advertisers there it depends like how often you're going to see the ad so um there are some other stuff that are rolling out like if somebody wants like i know like it's not a sales pitch but like it's uh, something that that we're able to provide and, and that is not available at this point to other sellers is coupon ads and ads that 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 you can like almost like dpa you can you can scroll and like after second scroll like on this on the second scroll uh, on TikTok, you have like dedicated um, storefront of, for your products, and after that, on the on the second scroll, you move from that dedicated store to uh, your website. So it's like smooth transition from from TikTok to the website. And uh, what is really good with TikTok, they allow deep linking. For those that don't know what deep linking is. Uh, it's completely inside of terms of service. Um, deep linking means that you create custom URLs that send people to specific page on, let's say, Amazon. But first, that link is checking your um, your phone or your computer if you have an app. So if you have an app, it's going to open uh, the page in application rather than in browser. And like, if you ask like, why is that so important? It's because like in app, you already have yourself logged in. You already have your credit card uh, set in place. So conversion rate is like at least double the amount comparing to going to directly to browser. So it's way easier to, to make a purchase by, by sending people directly to the app. Hey, interesting. And if we, if we dig into a bit, uh, TikTok is like, uh, like for anybody who's spent a bit of time on TikTok, I personally feel I, I lose uh, precious minutes of my personal time when I'm on TikTok. And so it's like, it's not easy to understand. Like we can understand that a lot of people will be looking because it's really addictive because you start and you end up being spent 15 minutes and you say, what, what did I just do? And, but it's like, why would uh, brands uh, use TikTok? In which cases would you use TikTok? Do you have like recommendations for what type of brands or what type of categories or when would you want to use TikTok? Yeah, definitely. So when we started working with TikTok guys, like I, 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 we had a couple of calls with, like we work pretty closely with them uh, now as well. So like for our clients, we have the TikTok dedicated team to help us with strategy and everything. So I always thought that TikTok is for kids. Like, you know, 15, 16 years old, um, teenagers and so on. But the, the, the reality is kind of different now. And be, because they have uh, 800 million users at this point, even more probably. So they're one of the uh, most downloaded apps in, in the previous months. 
Uh, what is interesting about TikTok is that only 7.5 or 7.7% of TikTok users while they're using TikTok on their phone have their TVs turned on, which is insane number. Because like when you're when you're on your phone, like there is a huge chance that something else is turned on around you because like you have distraction, like you watch TV, you talk to somebody else. But when you use TikTok, you need to have your sound turned on and you're fully focused. So, so like it's a captive, it's kind of a captive platform in that sense. It's so crazy. It yes. Your team. Yeah. Okay. So most of the most of the users at this point are around 24 years old. And 65% of all TikTok users uh, are women. So when, when it comes to top five brands that are important for TikTok users by analytics made by them, uh, one of them is Amazon. So that's really important thing to know. Um, and like, and is Amazon, yeah, is Amazon mm -hmm. buying uh, space on TikTok already? Is, are they advertising for their own products there? To be, to be honest, I didn't check. I can ask them and like I can return with that information. Like what what's like fun thing to 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 say, like one of the information like that I got from them. Uh people usually open TikTok 12 times a day, like users. Uh, nearly 50% of TikTok audience are mid to high income range people. And what is even more interesting is that like 28% 20, uh, of TikTok users are in high high tier when it comes to salaries. And that that's more than comparing to any other platform. And they they spend 315, like I, I'm reading the information just to let you know. So uh, when it comes to TikTok, they're second uh, biggest when it comes to, to time spent on the platform each day. And like there is one information that I find really important is that uh, audience is not duplicated. So when it comes to Facebook, 44% of people on TikTok cannot be found on Facebook. 72% of TikTok users cannot be found on um, Twitter, for example. And around 30 something percent cannot be uh, found on Instagram. So when you advertise on TikTok, basically you have a huge chance to reach out to people that, that you didn't reach before. You know, that's something that is super, super interesting. Uh, I have, when it comes to um, what kind of products are going pretty well. So yeah, 27% uh, uh, of all of the products that are sold through TikTok are clothing, 22 are uh, shoes, headphones are 16, Shampoos and cosmetics are really big on TikTok as well because, as I said, like I don't want to sound chauvinist or something, but 65% of girls are are the audience on TikTok, and like we we must admit that boys are not that into cosmetics on the other hand. So, so cosmetics are a big thing on on, on TikTok. So if you're selling that's, something yeah. something like that, that that's that's a really good thing to do. That's, that's quite amazing because I must admit that TikTok is like, it's funny to see how uh, I have teenagers and like Facebook, they don't really understand. Well, it, why would you be on Facebook? It's like, it's completely old fashioned. Twitter is like, I don't understand it. So they, they, it's already Instagram and but probably TikTok and maybe their children will say, what is Instagram? That's totally out of date. So it's very interesting to see that ev evolution. And uh, before we open the floor for, to questions, maybe is, do you have any um, success stories about uh, brands which which are investing a lot in, in Amazon, right? And which have used TikTok successfully to grow their Amazon business? So not, not this, names specifically, but just categories or general. Like. Of course, w w when it comes to full uh, case studies, you can, uh, everybody can check on sellersalley.com. Like we have like full list of case studies. So everybody can deep dive there. But overall, when it comes to uh, TikTok, uh, we don't have huge range because as an agency, we signed contract with them in January. So okay. it's still Thanks. too early. We see uh, some insane information. Like we, we, we have some clients that are making six figures a month through TikTok at this point. So, it, and you they're mean, Amazon sellers. Using tick, uh, they yeah. are selling on their Amazon account and the traffic is coming from TikTok, you're saying? Yeah, and that traffic is making six figures. 
that okay. that's something that 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 we have confirmed that that happened with us and how how did they track and that? it's car cosmetic okay interesting which is interesting yeah okay uh <laughs> <laughs> Why not? And, and and how does they get that? Are they using attribution for that, or is it just by uh, yeah? Is that yes, attribution? Sir. Okay. So and basically, you were saying that on, on the attribution part, uh, you would uh, you you need to be patient for fourteen days, right, before you see real data. So typically, you know, half a month later, it will what has happened uh, with with those links, right? And also, like with Amazon, like whenever you create a campaign, it's not going to start making a huge amount of sales on day one. It needs some time for algorithm to learn. So that campaign could get some traction and start making sales properly. Cool. We have already a question which uh, pertains to that. And, uh, and I, I know where it's coming from. And it's a great question. It's like, do you have an idea of the return on ad spent on those campaigns which are driving six figure sales? It's like, is that if you compared it to other campaigns, uh, sp specifically search campaigns uh, uh, on Google or on Amazon, what, what, what kind of ratio are we talking about? If we're talking about the same brand, for example. So when it comes to specific brand, I would need to double check. Last time I checked, it was around 4.5 when it okay. comes to return on that spend. So for those TikTok, for those specific yeah. TikTok advertising. Yeah, for the and if and on on its own, like uh, let's say uh, Amazon uh, uh, owns search uh, PPC, do you have just to benchmark? They they have around eight on DSP. Okay. So it's not as good as DSP, but on the other hand, like we need to have in mind that people on on, on TikTok are not fully oriented to to buying products. So and it, it's much further. Away. I, I, I much th higher in the funnel. So yeah, yeah, it's much higher in the funnel. So I I would consider that to be like pretty good success. Probably the fact of getting uh, like uh, people from uh, TikTok uh, is also if you're using DSP also they are probably retargeting those people which came from TikTok. So you've probably got a doubling effect of using both campaigns together. And one question to that specific brand: Are they using other means like Google or Facebook at the same time? Yeah, is it a yeah. full? They, they're using everything. Like they're they're a pretty big brand and they they, they use basically all the channels from Facebook to Google ads and, and Amazon PPC and DSP. And, and if we dig into that specific example, because I think that's very interesting is like, did, did you see a before and after in terms of like probably before they were doing only PPC on Amazon or maybe PPC only on outside of Amazon. And now they've, they've got all that. And if I understand, they've got also DSP. Is there learning about like how success looks like, or, you know, what, you, you know when, when you're fully when you're fully established brand you cannot expect that you're gonna triple your sales you know like but but like it's like on Amazon when Amazon rolls out a couple of new stuff uh, when it when it rolls out like I don't know video ads or um, display retargeting ads and so on like none of them are gonna make you a billionaire but if you do all of them combined like Shame. this one is I'm gonna be like <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. Like we're not magicians, but one is going to provide like five percent more in in sales. One is going to provide three percent. The other one is going to be like four percent, and so on. But like combined, they're going to end up with like thirty percent increase. So this is the same thing that is happening here by having like somebody that is selling a lot of stuff on on Amazon PPC. They expand it to other platforms. They are using DSP. DSP is awesome for so many things for remarketing, uh, th there is uh, one targeting method that you can, on DSP, for example, target your competitor products. Like if somebody visited your, your competition, you can target them. That's insane. That's really insane. Like th that's a really good thing to do. And on the other hand, like if you combine different stuff and like if you have your website, uh, you pr probably already have people that, that visited that website so you can create like lookalike audiences or you can do remarketing or retargeting and like send people to, to Amazon like depending you should always scale like is it better to send people to Amazon or do is it better to send them to your Shopify store there are so many different stuff like that that are affecting that answer 
One of them is like, what's more profitable for you? How well are you established off Amazon? Because like from our experience, we work with a lot of brands. And one of the things that we we can see is basically that people that are that, that are really good at Amazon, they suck it out like on, on other platforms because they have mindset of, of people that are selling on Amazon. And like uh, Google is completely different beast, for example, like advertising on Google is completely different thing. It's more developed and there are so many other options and people are having different mindset and they have different intentions. It's a different funnel. So, yeah. And if we double down on your question, and I'll come to a question in the chat in the Q&A section, but it's um, it's it's a very good in because we have a lot of people uh, which are asking questions. You know, okay, should I send the traffic to Amazon and should I or, or to my own store, right? Uh, should it be it Shopify or be it you know your own uh, store you have on another platform? The question is. Um, my assumption that usually the conversion rate will be much higher on Amazon. And although uh, the margins are typically higher on your own website because you don't pay the 15% to Amazon, uh, still the conversion rate and the size of the cake is much higher on Amazon and it will boost so much your ranking that end of the day, you should be more like on the long term, it's more interesting to send it to Amazon. What what would you say to that? It's, it's really hard question and it really depends on your strategy like if 99 percent of your sales are coming from amazon maybe you should try to keep some of the eggs in a different basket you know like maybe you you, sh you should at least have like 10 percent of sales coming from something else not only them like if you remember what happened a, literally a year ago when pandemic started and everything when amazon was was clustered with everything like everybody started thinking outside of FBA world and everybody started like with FBM. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and it it was so stressful for us as an agency as well. We gave everybody a month for free. And like I I I literally like I, I'm really happy to have here now because of that. Like I it, it was so so stressful. But like it it on the other hand it was so funny to see uh how Amazon sellers are insanely great people like how adaptable they are like how they can change easily like it hurts but they're changing you know like yeah. they move yeah. from fba to fbm like easily in like two weeks they, they would come like oh i'm gonna like my yeah, business not, is not, not working not all brands managed to do that unfortunately and some were, were left with uh, with but yeah and uh, and the final question before we, we we go to the other question is that um like typically when you talk to a brand or a brand is thinking, okay, maybe I should use DSP, right? Or I should mm -hmm. use off Amazon advertising. So typically you will reduce your return on ad spend because the search, uh, the PPC campaigns on Amazon are very low in the funnel and your return on ad spend is, is usually much higher, which showed on your example of TikTok. Like what would you respond to the fact of the potential of gross versus the potential of reducing your return on ad spend? You know, when, like when, when you launch a new product, you cannot expect uh, really good acres. Like once every 10 times you get really good acres right away, you know, but at the beginning, it's like with physical stores. Like I usually like to, uh, to talk like in that manner to, to clients and, and partners. Like guys, imagine that you open like a physical store next door and you want to have everybody around you to know about the store. Like you need to invest in advertising. You, you're probably not gonna go into green zone like to be profitable right away. It takes some time. And it's like this as well. Like by sending traffic from the outside to Amazon, you're investing in future sales as well. And one of the, the questions that I see is like, do you see an uplift in organic sales on Amazon account by sending external traffic? Yes, not right away, but you're building your brand after a month or two, you can definitely see the, the, the trend of changing the numbers. Like there are obviously different aspects. Like if, if your if your star rating changed, if you if the traction changed, or like so many different things are, are affecting your product. But overall, when you when you compare uh, it, the sales without getting external traffic or getting external traffic there is a difference after some time 
And uh, what, like, it's probably a, a bit of a stupid question, but, but you know, uh, I told you, I said uh, we would grill you. So uh, it's like, in terms of leverage, uh, from your experience, what kind of, uh, what's the worst si uh, situation where, uh, okay, you, you you get into bad or negative ROAS or and, and your sales are not going to, like, what's the the uh, kind of results you could get from lowest to highest? What, what have you seen? Like, what the best to the worst kind of thing? Well, if you don't know what you're doing, you can burn money, money like as much as you wish, literally. Uh, <laughs> And on the other no, but hand, I'll, I'll put it that way. It's like, what's a, a good uh, or a benchmark of a reasonable result and a great result? What what does a great result look like in terms of return on ad spend, growth and, and things like that? What, just to give an idea, a taste for people say, okay, if I start to invest a bit more into out of Amazon, out of Amazon Google, Facebook, TikTok, and also DSP, what kind of, how, once again, what success looks like? Yeah, well, if if you're used to Amazon, and let's say that that like you want ACOS at around twenty five percent return on ad spend is more or less like reverse ACOS. So you need to have a return on ad spend around four to get to twenty five percent. And like let's say that your margins are around that number. So and let's say that that's the number that that you aim for. It's probably gonna take around two or three months to get there. The, uh, but as I said, like depending on the channel, like for TikTok, creatives are the most important thing. And like, what you know what's funny? L random videos with your phone, like, hey guys, I have this, like try this, are working the best. Like nothing super fancy. Like it's, you shouldn't like take an excuse, like I don't have money for professional video and something. Like just take the product, take the phone and record it, try it and see what's going to happen. And like address people with uh, trying to solve the problem of theirs, and like not not try to because it's 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 different audience, you know. Those are young people and uh, around, as I said, 24, 25 years old, and they don't. You're you're not probably not the only one that is selling that product in the world, and like you need to explain to them like in in a witty, funny way, like if it's working. Like you know what's good. Like if if you have brand registry. Uh, go to Amazon, check your brand analytics, see your audience there. If you have a Shopify store, go to Google Analytics at, and check who is your audience. Like when you check your reviews and you, and go to Q&A, like you're probably got, I'm pretty sure that everybody that is selling on Amazon already knows like uh, what's the language that they should use when they speak to their customers. Like they should continue definitely using that language and adopt the, the specific platform because TikTok is not the market. Yeah. yeah, TikTok is is not like serious and like uh, with with with, with bow tie corporate, and everything. Yeah. yeah, it's not corporate. So yeah, you need to address uh, users that way as well, like in in, in a in a more familiar way to them. Makes sense. Um, let's dive into uh, the uh, few questions. Ah, Tamara is waking up. So the first one is: In your external campaigns, how good are Google Ads compared to Facebook Ads and TikTok Ads? So a benchmark a bit. So when you, when you want to start, let's say that you're starting starting with everything. So when it comes to Google Ads, uh, one of the important things uh, when it comes to broad modifier keywords, they're gone you don't have them in google anymore and like that's really sad to to know like i was a huge fan of them and we used to use plus amazon word inside of the keywords just to make sure that everybody's gonna uh, end up like searching for them because like you, you should start by using word amazon inside of your keyword just to narrow down the search funnel on, on google because google is huge and you, you can you can spend as much money as you wish there on advertising so try narrow and like if you see that is working then broaden up like a bit and so on and when you when you compare google ads facebook and TikTok, like on google i really like using search campaigns like regular search campaigns if your ad copy is good and your targeting is good like what what's really good about all of the platforms there is like they have more advanced targeting methods than amazon 
you know, like on Google, you're able to fully target specific city or part of the city, like area in town and so on. So if you are just starting, maybe targeting New York is not the best option. Like there are other places in the U.S. That, where people can buy your product. And so would you say that if just a, sim, a, a yes or no kind of thing, it does, so Google ads would work better, would be more efficient than Facebook or TikTok, which are high in the funnel. Would you agree with that? It really, it, it, like it depends on how broad like, you're going. Okay. Yeah. But yeah. If, like, if you manage to make it uh, less broad and start from a more uh, sharper audience, then you would get better results. Okay. Makes sense. Yeah. Um, if, if, if you have information like on your website, on the other hand, like who's your audience and so on, and you can create like lookalike audience and send people to, to your um, Amazon store. Like you can create lookalike audiences on TikTok and on Facebook, like Facebook and TikTok are more or less similar. If you're familiar with Facebook targeting and so on, TikTok is working more or less the Very same. Okay. Like, yeah. So if, if you know what you're doing on, on Facebook, you're probably going to know what you're doing on TikTok as well. And, and on TikTok, is there uh, like Facebook, you've got this uh, campaign manager. Do you have the same thing on TikTok? Yeah. Uh, where, which, and it's open to any, any, it's open. You don't have to have a specific access. Uh, you don't TikTok, need right? you don't need to have an agency to do it for you. You can do it on your own. Like obviously, I I would prefer that everybody works with us. But course, like you you can do it on your own with us. You you have a return on um ad uh, investment like credits. Like for every fifty thousand, you get fifteen thousand back. For every twenty five, we like there are some different incentives that TikTok is giving us to to give to clients. I need to double check. Everything it's between ten and twenty percent of your ad investment is is going to be given as a credit to 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 users. That's a great deal. Um, I'll dive into the questions. Uh, is there an easy way to directly integrate deep links to Amazon, for example, in Facebook, where on both iOS and Android the app starts automatically, and if it's not installed, it goes into the browser. Or do you need a system that is in between? That's a very specific question. Yeah, that's super specific one. I need to check with colleague. I don't want to sound smart and, and like tell you something that is not true. I'm I'm gonna. Yeah, you're smart, but not omniscient. That's all. And that's you, that's okay. That's you okay, You know, Laza. you know, if if I'm the smartest guy in the company, we have a problem. So that, that's what I usually say to my colleagues. I, I, I'm going to get back to you with, with the information about, about this Great. one. So we'll follow up in our email uh, after the session. We'll, we'll answer to that question. Um, now we're getting into the grilling questions. What of sources course. Thank you, would you re- Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what sources would you recommend for Amazon attribution other than TikTok? Well, most definitely when it comes to attribution, I I would go with Google and Facebook. But one really cool thing about Amazon attribution, it's not only for paid traffic, you know, you can use it with any link. So if you have blog posts, if you, let's say that you're selling coffee and you know some, some blogs like websites that are talking about coffee, about baristas and so on. And they write a blog post about your coffee you can you can give them the link that they can use for on 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 that blog post and you you are going to be able to track it so that's a really good thing to to know great great insight thanks um another question other than remarketing campaigns have you found any other upper funnel audience that can work well on dsp like in market or third party lifestyle so this is a specific dsp question um and like what are the best audience which which works best or the type of audience which is like in market third party lifestyle so what the type of audience that's probably a that's a difficult one right yeah but that's the one that that, that is like more about like what kind of products are you selling you know like it it really depends what's the product like i i I agree with tamara when it comes to advertising remarketing campaigns are working the best like those are like safe win you know like easy win like low hanging fruits but like when it comes to others like i would definitely try them do a b tests uh because for some products some of the campaign types and targeting methods are working for some not okay 
which makes sense. Um, we use Amazon Attribution Beta to measure external traffic. Unfortunately, not even Amazon support <laughs> knows. That's surprising that Amazon support doesn't know anything. Oh, uh, so sorry. <clears throat> uh, unfortunately, not even Amazon support knows if it also measures purchases made when we, vendor, do not have the buy box. Do you have experience with this? That's a difficult one. I don't have an answer to this one, to be honest. I'm sorry, Mark, like it, whatever yeah. I tell you, like I can sound smart, but like the problem, like as, as you already know, Amazon is not giving answers, like for they're, they're just rolling out stuff and like it's about A-B testing and, and checking. And for this one, I cannot like safely guarantee that, that you can track sales if, for, if you don't have buy box. Yeah, I know. Typically, I know on the on the search part for vendors, normally they attribute sales only for when you have the buy box on sponsored products, on sponsored brands. I think it's a gray area. So probably, I would assume that the attribution is is giving you is giving the numbers whenever you have the buy box or you don't have the buy box. Probably you would have to compare your uh, like a lost buy box rate versus the attribution uh, sales which have been given to you and versus the search. Uh, like PPC uh, sales, and then it, you can smell if if the sales are giving you the your uh, with with when you have the buy box or not. That would be my my guess. But I don't, and I don't think nobody in in Amazon would take the risk of of answering that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> another one is how dangerous is it to have a med mediator between your feed and Amazon? There are a lot of companies which are which are putting themselves in between, uh, and is it possible to create shopping as such? Uh, I I think Tam Tamar means like when when it comes to Google Ads and to have shopping ads there, like you're not able to do it like straight like directly to to Amazon, but when it comes to mediators. I cannot guarantee for anybody that comes to the market and says like, I, I can do something for you, like try it, but like whatever they do, like I, I, I don't find it possible like, and to be like precise and to, to make any sense, to be honest. Yeah, I know that in some cases, bigger companies which are using like DMPs also, or they're, they're aggregating different audiences from different DSPs, for example. So they're using in between tools or like, when you have to share uh, first party audiences and third party audiences, they, they like Amazon doesn't want to share their data. They don't want to share their data. So they put some, some, someone in between to aggregate uh, all the data. But that's when you have a, a, a very big, um, when you have a very big campaigns, that's at least from uh, what I know. But when that's you have- That's a tricky one. It's, it's almost like, should you buy newsletter lists? Like <laughs> my answer is no but like people are doing it yeah uh another question is do you know if there is a way to find the uplift in new to brand when you have external traffic running can't see it in amazon attribution can you uh so, do you like do you have the new to brand information or from the amazon attribution or like are they able to uh, to, yeah, so, so that, that you can see if they're new to the brand. Yeah, to be honest, I haven't seen it. We, we couldn't find it yet. So that it's okay. not an option so far. For me, it seems that Amazon attribution is very uh, young still, right? And that probably mm -hmm. they've launched it without having it completely finished, which they usually absolutely. do. Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. Well, to be honest, like it's a huge advance from like not having it at all. If they're gonna have like an option so you can place a pixel on Amazon, that's never gonna happen. They're never gonna share the information with other platforms like Google or Facebook, because yeah. uh, like apart from selling, uh, for them the data and traffic is the highest resource, like the most valuable resource that they have. So they they have like guarding stance and like they're slowly rolling out and they're like giving you an option to bring information from from somewhere else 
to Amazon to ask a question and they're going to answer. And that's it. They're never going to have like two way street and like exchange information. Yeah. There's never going to be an API that's going to work with. Like I was thinking about like connecting different APIs and like in the future, but like that, that's going to be like pretty crazy thing to have. Like that would be a really good thing to have, to be honest. Yeah, but Amazon is not uh, very eager to share um, information with uh, <laughs> with others on their own uh, customers. So uh, we've got a couple of minutes left, so we can take uh, one or two questions. Ah, here you go. Um, every day there are more TikTokers focused on showing advertising different products available on Amazon. Do you work with any? Aha. Since they use a very appealing review format video, what do you think the impact of these TikTokers could be compared to pure TikTok advertising in terms of driving purchase intention? So ah, it's a bit like bloggers, right? Yeah. So what Antonio is talking about is like people, TikTokers themselves advertising for a product on Amazon. There is something called creator marketplace on TikTok where you can log in and you can literally use TikTok analytics and filter out by a uh, niche cat uh, category or whatever, and to see like which are the best uh, influencers on TikTok for your product. And you can reach out to them like um, Amazon, sorry. TikTok is never uh, taking any fee or percentage of anything from, from the deal that you make there with influencer. Basically, it's a really good way how to do it. Like, as we work with Trustio, they invest in both ways, like in using both um, attribution, uh, both, both uh, advertising and and influencers. Like, I'm pretty sure that you can see all yeah. around it. It reminds me when I when I started working, which is some years ago now, and when it was the beginning of, of YouTube and of bloggers, and it was a big thing of say, oh, we'll send samples to to bloggers, and to, they will do a review, and that was the, the first the first days of it. And now, like you get them also on TikTok, so it's it's a, a like a pro, you know a product ambass ambassador. It, it's it's like early days of Instagram for TikTok, so it, it's. It's like, you know, when you talk to somebody that is selling on Amazon for like five or more years, and like, remember those days when we had so many sales and whatever we did, it made it made something. So when it comes to TikTok, it, now it's the best time to to, to do it because- and, and like, Early adopter, right? Early adopters, not many competitors in the niche and so on. Like you can do a lot of stuff there at this point. That's a great insight. And I think the question was maybe if you were to comp like, do you have any insights about how efficient it is to have a like TikTok uh, advocate your products versus advertising on TikTok or maybe difficult to say? I would, I would definitely like, it, it's a different thing. I would definitely do both. I would definitely do both. I would, be, because it's serving like, it, different purposes, right? So exactly. The first one is for branding and like, well, you're probably going to make some sales. Like the, if you get Bella Porch, you're probably going to get a lot of sales, but that's something that you're going to pay a lot on the other hand. So, yeah. Great. So I think we've, we, we're almost over the hour. I told you, Lazar, we always get to an hour. So I think it was really an amazing session. I've learned a lot about TikTok myself. So I'll probably not open it. Ah, we have a last question. So that's the last minute question. Uh, at the beginning of the session, Lazar said that the attribution in the brand store with source tags only occurs which, with immediate purchase. But there is also an attribution of 14 days have I misunderstood you? I think it's about the thing of when you're sending it to the product page with the videos, that it probably will not show any sales. Uh, no, the, the thing is like when, when you use um, Amazon attribution, you have attribution window of 14 days. And on the other hand, if you're using storefront and there is storefront analytics uh, section, and in that section you have UTMs. And if you use those UTMs, they, they don't have attribution. That's the difference. Like and, and that's also not the attribution real attribution. Is on the it's on the first click, right? You said so. No, attribution is 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 like tracking everybody that that clicked on 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 the ad, and like if and they can click on like on other stuff afterwards, but they are going to be attributed to to that click. That's yeah. And, okay. And if you're going to a page which is not a product page, it will not know what to attribute it to, right? Is that correct? Is yeah, that it makes sense. Like, you know, when you go to Facebook, for example, and you, 
uh, and you send traffic to your website and you always see more purchases than you, you see on Google Analytics. And that's attribution. Like they they sign some sales to themselves that they, that didn't really happen there. Makes sense. Uh, 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 last question is: uh, Can you, YouTube be used for Amazon ad marketing instead of TikTok? Yes, sir. You can use YouTube easily. Nicely said. Um, uh, it says fourteen days attribution for source tags in the brand stores in the brand store help what when 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 you go to brand store and there is like storefront analytics and you create utm there it's not like a real attribution it's just like last click and that's the main difference so uh, i don't know in which part of the brand store uh, mark is checking but like if it's from attribution then it is 14 days but if it's like custom made uh, specific campaign to the store like custom url that's the last click yeah because the store doesn't generate sales the page of the store doesn't generate yeah. sales right it's not a, a product page yeah so, so th that return on ads pass on that is like terrible but it's not realistic okay cool uh i think we we will close the questions uh lazar is available i uh, go on sellers alley we'll give uh you his contact details on the follow-up email and with the recording uh i want to say a great thank you lazar really was a lot of a lot of learnings on our side our webinar will be our next webinar will be in two weeks and we will be talking about amazon fees and our uh invite uh, we will invite someone from getida to see how to reduce your costs and increase your profits in your seller account. Thank you very much, Lazar. Thank you Thank very you much, so everyone. Much. Have a great evening, and we look forward to seeing you soon. Bye-bye. Have a good one. Bye. Bye.